Hello, welcome back. I will today try to summarize what we have learned in terms of the iron chemistry. Okay. Iron as we have discussed at the very early stage is one of the most abundance metal on earth and it is no wonder biological system has taken up iron and therefore has utilized for doing uh, various important chemistry like these are the redox chemistry, these are going to be exciting chemistry uh, where both the iron oxidation state as well as for example, oxygen oxidation state will vary. Uh, we have seen first of all the oxygen transport by iron like we have seen in case of hemoglobin we have we have this iron 2 plus high spin uh, high spin species which is outside the plane and bound with histidine it pushes in it is pushed in when iron 3 oxo species is formed or iron 3 sorry super oxo species is formed uh, this is this is the reason why we are alive right this is beautiful chemistry supported by these beautiful side chains and uh, this chemistry we have seen many a times so iron can act as the metal for the porphyrin center or protoporphyrin 9 center in case of hemoglobin and myoglobin for keeping all of us alive and can transport oxygen from lungs to different part of the body and this is why our blood is also red right. We have learned that and the intricacies of this chemistry. We have also learned the heme copper oxidases once again the same iron chemistry but with a twist of adding copper into the mix. So, you have the copper chemistry and the iron chemistry individually we, in the last class we have summarized how the copper chemistry is and today let us say in this part we will see how iron and copper can come to a compromise situation and can do wonder for the biological system. For instance, the cytochrome C oxidase which is nothing but heme copper oxidase it can convert oxygen into water a very very difficult transformation if you look at it requires 4 electron 4 proton overall to convert it in, into water by doing so it, it is participating in, in, the, in the proton gradient creation and, uh, and overall this is a very important transformation in, in nature. Okay. Cytochrome C oxidase has quite a few active species or quite a few metal centers that is involved of course, there is a iron copper center which is the one we will briefly discuss. We will not discuss about the cytochrome C center which is the, uh, is the heme center supported by the axial ligand such as cysteine and histidine on both the side on one side histidine another side cysteine. So, this is just the electron transfer side there is another dicopper center which is responsible responsible for just the electron transfer overall it is the hopping of electron from cytochrome C to copper center to the iron center and all the way to the heme copper oxidase center this center this is where the oxygen is uh, taken up to convert to be converted into the water these are all membrane bound protein as you have seen from the membrane here. Okay. So, the active site in that heme copper oxidase or cytochrome C oxidase main active site of course, there are other metal as you have seen is this porphyrin iron center as well as this copper center. This is similar to what you have seen let us say for one of the copper center of hemocyanin or tyrosinase 3 histidine is there, but of course, in hemocyanin tyrosinase you have 2 copper centers. Here one copper center with 3 histidine, but with a twist of adding this phenol the tyrosine histidine cross link phenol being appended right over there. This is the heme center where you have the iron center and from the axial side there is this histidine. So, proximal side is histidine and the distal side is open for oxygen coordination. Some crystal structure are there which is suggestive of some intermediate, but these are highly questionable. In any case the proposed mechanism is such that that iron will first form the iron superoxo species just like what we were discussing earlier just like you have seen in case of the hemoglobin myoglobin with the histidine coordination it will bind with the oxygen to give the iron 3 superoxo iron would have been outside the plane now pulled in 
with the uh, histidine also moved in any any case this is going to be the iron 3 superoxo species the very fast form intermediate characterization of such intermediate in the synthetic studies is done uh, but most importantly it will immediately almost immediately react with copper 1 to give rise to a peroxo intermediate this peroxo intermediate could be the iron 3 OO copper 2 or it could be a iron 3 hydroperoxo intermediate all of these species will add up in reducing oxygen uh, um, by multiple electrons overall forming the water upon oxygen oxygen cleavage in this peroxo species we would get the copper 2 hydroxo species in presence of this phenoxy radical formation um, via the hydrogen atom abstraction uh, of, uh, through the species we would also get high valent iron oxo intermediate formation. We have seen the nature of this iron copper species it could be an end on bound geometry it could be side on end on bound geometry or it could be side on and side on bound geometry. But most likely if it is a tetradented ligand, ligand then this is the species forming if it is a tridented ligand this is the species is forming perhaps one can rule out such sort of species formation. Since we in the enzyme has a have a tridented ligand, so this is the species likely to be forming in the in, in the enzyme. We have seen the crystal structure in synthetic setup for such intermediate where iron 3 which having a side on geometry and end on geometry for the copper case. Finally, we were able to see that in synthetic studies both these side on bound as well as the side on end on and side on side on bound geometry can be interrogated further by a proton and electron to give the oxygen oxygen cleavage which is nothing but forming water because the protonation of these intermediates should give rise to the water formation. This is fantastic. We have seen in the summary for these uh, you know synthetic model studies uh, that, that these species uh, is characteristic of each of these species are very characteristic they have now now very uh, very fingerprint like uh, like identity identification in terms of the UV visible spectra, resonance Raman spectra, XAPS, different other um, fast spectroscopic and sensitive spectroscopic technique can be utilized for characterizing the so formed intermediate. So, the synthetic understanding is so far such that we can follow each and every step of what is happening in case of oxygen. So, we can start with oxygen, reduce it by one electron uh, to give the superoxo another electron transfer to give the peroxo species most likely this is the peroxo species formation and then the protonation and further electron transformation uh, electron transfer cleaves the oxygen oxygen bond. Well, to summarize the synthetic efforts uh, what has been done so far is iron copper peroxo species has been characterized and synthesized and characterized and upon adding hydrogen ot atom in the form of proton and electron it was possible to detect this iron oxo species formation which is definitely indicating that oxygen oxygen bond of ox oxygen dioxygen molecule is cleaved to form this species right. One can also independently start from this iron 3 peroxo species where oxygen is uh, reduced twice one for electron from iron another from outside um, as a electron source to give the iron 3 peroxo species. These iron 3 peroxo species then can react with a equivalent of copper 1 as well as proton and base uh, this can give rise to the species. Just to remind you if the base is not there which is this one this uh, uh, cyclohexyl dicyclohexyl imidazole this reaction does not work. Of course, if proton is missing this reaction does not work if copper 1 is missing once again this has no relevance in terms of the iron copper. Uh, um, copper uh, heme peroxidase chemistry right. So, one can again reach out from a different angle also by synthesizing the axially ligated iron 3 superoxo species one can then also interrogate such species towards the 2 equivalent of copper An where, where 1 equivalent will act as a electron transfer re reagent to make it the iron 3 peroxo another equivalent will react with it to further 
take, take you to the formation of this oxo species. So, to summarize the uh, heme copper oxidases, of course, you have seen the stepwise formation and stepwise understanding in, in the slides when we were discussing originally. But here to simply sum, summarize that we understand that enzymes such as hemoglobin and myoglobin can, can reversibly bind oxygen, does not do any other oxygenation chemistry or any other advantageous chemistry or advantageous chemistry. But in case of heme copper oxidases as you have seen this is quite fascinating where oxygen itself is converted to water, but by taking advantage of both the heme iron center and copper chemistry together. So, it is combining the best of the two world of uh, one of iron chemistry, another of copper chemistry, putting them together such a very difficult transformation such as oxygen to, to, to water molecule conversion can be possible. And we have seen that this has a real implication in terms of our, our, our biological, uh, biological transformations. Okay. Now, moving the gear in summarizing this, so we will see the cytochrome P450, right. This rings the bell, right? We have discussed this cytochrome P450. Once again, this is a heme enzyme. Of course, here no copper is involved, just the heme center, but not here oxygen is going to be converted to water. Oxygen will be utilized to do the oxygenase chemistry. That means, if you have aliphatic substrate, if you have many other substrate, the cytochrome P450 can do the reaction on the organic substrate. The cytochrome P450 is, a, is the best synthetic organic chemist ever. Almost the reactions of uh, the synthetic chemist cannot perhaps dream of doing efficiently can be done relentlessly smoothly by cytochrome P450, right. Cytochrome P450 is crystal structure. This is the camphor bound crystal structure. This is the heme side, but one notable change here from the previous cases of hemoglobin, myoglobin and cytochrome C oxidase is this cysteine thiolate binding, right. Cysteine thiolate binding is different. Previously, it was the histidine coordination. Now, this binding can be extremely efficient or extremely important both for the oxygen-oxygen bond cleavage as well as your important, uh, imp important iron high valent oxo intermediate stabilization, right. So, these iron uh, high valent oxo intermediate upon stabilizing, of course, upon forming and little bit stabilizing, it can abstract hydrogen atom from the substrate and subsequently it can hydroxylate the aliphatic substrate, right. So, the reaction mechanism to sum very quickly, we, we have seen the iron 3 species which would be outside the plane, although this the drawing does not reflect, this is the resting state of the enzyme organic substrate um, you know orient itself in front of the active site oxygen oxygen binding as well as activation leads to superoxo another electron transfer through 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 this uh, you know iron 4 cluster and the big chain of event that gives rise to the iron 3 peroxo species formation protonation gives rise to the iron 3 hydroperoxo species formation you remember none of these species formation are hap are happening in in case of the hemoglobin and myoglobin but in case of cytochrome c oxidase just like cytochrome p450 cytochrome c oxidase may have some similarity in these steps. We have similar perhaps uh, intermediate in cytochrome C oxidase also, but none of these intermediates are fully characterized in those cytochrome C oxidases cases. But here we have informations that these species are called these compound 0 or iron 3 hydroperoxo species which can undergo the, um, the cleavage of the OH bond to give the iron 4 oxo radical cation. So, essentially iron 5 oxo which can abstract hydrogen atom from RH to give the iron 4 hydroxo. Well, you have seen also the catalase activity and the peroxidase activity. If this pathway is not forming or this is not the desired pathway, oxygen is missing or the electron transfer is not sufficient in presence of of the hydrogen peroxide as an intermediate or as, as an active species, we can utilize these iron 3 species to shuttle between these iron 3 
and iron 3 hydroperoxo. This is known as peroxide sand, but this is the mechanism you have seen for the peroxidases, right. So, the peroxidase chemistry essentially involve the formation of these iron 3 hydroperoxo species starting from the iron 3 aqua complex from directly from there it forms this intermediate and from there on it can go on to give rise to the water molecule right and uh, and in, in in presence of still it would require 2 h dot from 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 the substrate but overall it can it can give you from uh, from hydrogen peroxide to 2 equivalent of water for alkyl hydroperoxo to 1 equivalent of alcohol and 1 equivalent of water. Of course, there is formation of this high valent iron oxo intermediate which, which can then further in presence of an electron and proton like H dot can give rise to this intermediate and then finally back to that intermediate. So, this catalytic cycle is also true for the peroxidase right that we have seen and for the catalase we have seen that it is just the settling between these iron 3 intermediate and iron 4, 4 oxo radical intermediate these two intermediate settles here just the H2O2 is taking part and H2O2 is converted to one equivalent of water and one equivalent of oxygen. If enough H2O2 is not present then the formation of this intermediate can be question or can be possible, but in presence of the reductant such as NADPH or so even if enough H2O2 is not present still these intermediate remain valid no other intermediate is possible in those cases as well right. So, this is quite interesting they are quite interlinked as you can see both the cytochrome C oxidase, cytochrome P450, catalase, peroxidase all are all are playing very simple game of uh, game of high valent iron oxo species formation right. So, we have seen in cytochrome C oxidase we can we are seeing in cytochrome P450 we have seen in the catalase we have seen in the peroxidase all of them are essentially forming high valent iron oxo intermediates right in different form. Now, um, as you have seen in case of cytochrome C oxidase there is a iron copper center these are only heme center ok. The same uh, diagram we have seen one more time in the form of the iron being outside the plane how iron is pushed in overall giving rise to this sort of intermediate which is uh, which is quite fascinating overall to follow that this oxygen then react as well to give you the uh, steps that we have just discussed. So, this is the same intermediate we have discussed right. So, so far it is you have to study a little bit uh, because otherwise it gets complicated or confusing because these are related and these are similar yet distinct they are not similar or same. They are similar but not the same there are subtle differences you need to understand. So, the peroxidase chemistry, catalase chemistry and cytochrome P450 chemistry is, is very similar you should you should read it together understand the difference and cytochrome C oxidase is little different of course you have seen hemoglobin myoglobin is completely different they have they are kind of the no hassle enzyme it just do it just does one one activity and that is oxygen transport right. So, that is quite quite interesting for all all of us us to remember moving on why we what we have understood also clearly is this hemoglobin and myoglobin utilizes histidine and cytochrome P450 type of enzyme utilizes uh, this cysteine thiolate wherever the high valent iron oxo species formation and their stabilization is required this cysteine intermediate is is called upon. Nature has utilized heme center both for the reversible oxygen binding and oxygen activation and subsequent reaction. By changing the nature of the axial ligand from histidine to this cysteine we have seen that uh, that, uh, that nature, uh, nature tunes its reactivity. Protein side chain of course plays a key role this sort of cysteine, uh, cysteine uh, thiolate bridging 
helps you in overall hydrogen bonding um, bonding or the proton conduit to form in the to form the hydroperoxo intermediate and then then the oxygen oxygen cleavage becomes easier because of of this big push that is coming out from the thiolate. So, the thiolate is negatively charged ligand effectively it pushes the electron from the thiolate to the iron to all the way to the OO and therefore, the oxygen oxygen cleavage becomes easier. Overall, I would also say that these iron iron high valent oxo species once it is formed that is these high valent iron 4 oxy radical cation that is iron 5 essentially can also be stabilized quite nicely by this by this thiolate cross linking or thiolate linkage. So, therefore, it is it is essential to understand the nature motive of making these almost similar thing, but 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 really distinct thing by subtle changes nature did not play too much with these species right. All right. So, that is about the heme chemistry. Let us say next look at the non heme chemistry, non heme chemistry as you have seen are yet another avenue right. This is once again very very fascinating right. So, so far we have seen at least one porphyrin is there. We have seen hemoglobin, myoglobin, cytochrome C oxidase, cytochrome P450 catalase, peroxidase all of these cases we have at least one heme center. Now, we want to get rid of the heme center and we want to put the simple ligand such as histidine right. So, we have al already seen in one case of just histidine that is, but this is an unsymmetrical case as you know 3 histidine, 2 histidine, but this is the hemerythrin case which is not doing any, any sensitive chemistry I would say in terms of the substrate oxygenation or oxidase descent type of chemistry, but this is a pretty important reaction that it binds with iron center uh, upon binding also it ends up transferring electron that we as we have summarized earlier and this oxygen is, is really um, binding is really reversible. So, whenever it is required from this species it can remove the oxygen and comes back to this species right. So, this is uh, this is important for marine vertebrates for their life, but there is no organic substrate to be functionalized in these cases and these are well knit well built uh, intermediate. You see two iron centered bridged by glutamate and aspartate and hydroxo and this histidine ligand and histidine ligand unsymmetrical ligand these are beautiful right. But uh, we, we do not uh, we have we have seen earlier the spectroscopic features and everything, but let us look at some of the chemistry that can be done by this non heme iron center of course, not exactly these center, but these are non heme right because the porphyrin ring is not there. So, these are non heme center if you look at further let us look at the some of the hydroxylation chemistry that we have seen some time back. So, this hydroxylation chemistry is super important from the synthetic perspective as well. Of course, from the enzyme perspective it is very very important, but it is also very exciting from the synthetic perspective. This mechanistic understanding goes as simple that uh, for the synthetic studies as well uh, this iron 3 hydroxo is forming it can react with hydrogen peroxide to give you the iron 3 hydroperoxo species. These iron 3 hydroperoxo species these are all synthetic studies I am talking at, at this point right now. These iron 3 hydroxo peroxo species can undergo oxygen oxygen bond cleavage to form iron 5 oxo hydroxo intermediate right. Iron 5 oxo hydroxo intermediate is formed. Um, this iron 5 oxo hydroxo intermediate is a super reactive intermediate can abstract hydrogen atom from RH to give you R dot and iron 4 dihydroxy intermediate. This rebound between R, R dot and OH would give rise to the ROH intermediate right. So, this is this is quite phenomenal you have seen such sorts of high valent iron oxo species formation in case of cytochrome P450. Um, just moment ago we were discussing cytochrome P450 also has essentially iron 5 oxo which is iron 4 oxo radical cation which can do quite a beautiful lot of chemistry with, with, with the porphyrin ring, but these are non porphyrin ring or non heme ligand system which are also capable of doing this chemistry right. So, we, we these are similar chemistry what we have seen in cytochrome P450, but 
uh, these are non heme iron chemistry which is also quite exciting chemistry that, that we know of right. Now this cleavage of the oxygen oxygen bond in iron 3 hydroperoxo can be influenced by water or by the by the carboxylic acid. Water can assist in this ring formation mode where the oxygen oxygen bond cleavage becomes feasible and can form really iron oxo hydroxo intermediate which can then undergo the epoxy and or the cis dihydroxylation product formation. In case of these hydroperoxo species as you know so far that these hydroperoxo intermediate can also undergo oxygen oxygen cleavage with the help of the hydrogen bonding from let us say acetic acid. This acetic acid hydrogen bonding weakens or makes it easier to break the oxygen oxygen bond to make the iron 5 oxo along with the carboxylate linkage. This carboxylate linkage linked iron 5 oxo once again can react with, with the olefin to give the epoxidation product there could be quite interesting beautiful chemistry coming out of these as well. So, these are synthetic chemistry, but most importantly this sort of synthetic chemistry can be utilized in predictably selective hydroxylation chemistry, right. We can have predictably selective chemistry originating from these non-heme iron synthetic compound. Uh, we, we have this reactivity of these iron oxo hydroxo or high valent iron oxo intermediates are quite predictable in this nature where tertiary is found to be more reactive than secondary than the primary center right. If you can you can actually reverse this reactivity mode with the suitable electron withdrawing group. Once you have an electron withdrawing group present that molecule becomes less reactive in this case no electron withdrawing group is there therefore it is more reactive this tertiary center. This tertiary center is uh, very less reactive since electron withdrawing group is there. In this case this tertiary center is very close to an electron withdrawing group therefore this is not that reactive as well. In fact in such a case maybe tertiary is not reactive too much compared to even the secondary one. So uh, this sort of this sort of selectivity in case of olefin epoxidation can also be extended both in terms of the directing group, sterically demanding group and uh, as well as the electron richness can be monitored and can be predicted for a given organic substrate. So depending on the substrate complex the substrate is prediction for the hydroxylation site becomes much more easier right. We have seen that for example if you are looking at this compound um, well you have a primary center, you have a secondary center, second tertiary center secondary secondary center of course primary center. But primary are not reactive, secondaries are not reactive too much, tertiary is going to react and that is what you see. If you introduce a steric bulk, so this becomes not so prominent at this point because it is sterically hydroxylation is sterically uh, hindered and therefore even the secondary center is getting reacted over here. Of course, if you have a uh, if you have a secondary site or primary site the product will be ketone not the hydroxo product because the upon first hydroxylation further oxidation becomes inevitable and very very facile the end up giving this product. Now this short of intermediate we have seen this is the site of the reaction because these sites are deactivated by this electron withdrawing uh, ester group. You can override this sort of bias of electron uh, steric bias if you have a directing group instead of making it uh, ester if you make acid then this uh, acid is now going to direct this uh, CH bond to give the corresponding hydroxylated product that is fascinating. In this molecule as you can see you have one tertiary center, another tertiary center, another tertiary center, this center is sterically encountered or uh, uh, hindered this is also not too reactive due to the electron deficiency and this is the site uh, where the reaction is happening and selectively this is the site where reaction is happening. It is important to also note that there are going to be other product, there is other product formation, but those are not too much compared to the major product formation. So, we can perhaps put those in the on the side, but nonetheless they are forming right. So, more the complex substrate you have better it is for its predictably selective functionalization in this case out of all different CH bond that is present in here selectively this hydroxylation can be possible in this case even the keto formation becomes difficult because of the steric hindrance. So, this is a highly engineered substrate, highly complex substrate 
and the and the prediction becomes much more easier. So, in this type of chemistry just let me conclude by saying that the value of this aliphatic CH hydroxylation or CH oxidation reaction for late stage synthesis rests on how predictive the electronic, steric and carboxylate directing modes of selectivity are in complex molecular setting. In other words more complex the substrate is better it is for the for the active species to do the chemistry selectively. With this we will come back again, thank you very much.